When you think back to the good old days on the playground at school, one of the most common questions always asked is what sport do you play? Now you can hear answers like basketball, football, soccer, dance, really anything. Everyone had their answer. I know I did. But I want you to think about if you have ever asked the question or been asked, what sport do you play? I say this because I was asked this question a lot growing up. But I was also asked some other tougher questions. I was asked, will you be able to run past the age of 12? Will you be able to walk past the age of 15? Will you ever even be able to play sports? I was asked these questions because when I was born, I suffered a stroke to the right side of my brain, partially paralyzing the entire left side of my body, giving me what's called cerebral palsy. Now, I grew up being told by doctors and people in the medical field that the answer to those questions, and many more, was no. No, I won't run. No, I won't walk. No, I won't play sports. But when I scored a goal in the World Cup quarterfinal, representing the United States of America, and I'm running back to midfield with the ball in my hands, all I could think about is every single time someone told me I wouldn't be where I am today. Now, I definitely feel like I skipped a couple chapters there, but that's why I'm here, to share my journey and my own pursuit of progress through dealing with cerebral palsy, becoming a national team soccer player, and founding a nonprofit organization. But where to start? Where else can you start other than what is cerebral palsy? Well, CP is a physical disability caused by the brain's inability to signal the muscles to do what they're supposed to do. For me, it's my entire left side. You see, I have bad weakness, poor muscle movement, poor coordination, bad balance, really anything that requires my left side to do something muscular, I'm not very good at. But you may look at me now and say, what the heck is this kid talking about? He walks, talks, and looks perfectly fine. Thank you, thank you, I try. <laughs> but it wasn't always this way. See, I had to go through years and years of doctor's offices, PT appointments, I had to wear a brace, I even got Botox. I know, I know, I'm absolutely glowing. <laughs> but no, the Botox was for my calf and my hamstring, for the sole goal of for me to walk better. Because you see, walking is the hardest thing I do every day. I have to think about every single step I take because the normal brain wants to walk heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. My brain wants to walk on my toe. So if I stop thinking about it, I begin to revert back to the way that my brain wants to walk because all of a sudden, I'm not thinking about the way I should walk. Now I give my parents the most credit for this because they hammered into me from a very young age. Shape, re-heel down. Shape, re-heel down. Shape, re-heel down. I can still hear my dad yelling in my ear every day. And eventually, after years and years, I can't stress enough how long it took for me to get better at this whole walking thing. But I did eventually with a motivation of wanting to be like a normal kid. I don't really like the word normal, but it's what we'll use for now. Because I am normal, even though I'm disabled. My other motivation was also to be a better soccer player. But how does a kid who can barely walk, barely even run, play soccer? Well, in short, I couldn't. If I tried to kick a ball, I fell over. If I tried running, I fell over. I ended up on the ground. I just wasn't very good. I couldn't keep up. See, the problem that I and thousands of other kids across the country face with cerebral palsy is we get given up on. Because everyone knows as you get older, sports get more competitive. And some of the first kids that get weeded out are kids with disabilities. I was no different. See, I started playing soccer because of my dad. He was the town soccer coach. Everyone knew who he was. They still do. So of course his son's going to play soccer, right? When he turns out disabled, seems like there's other plans. But that's when my dad had another plan. He created an extra team with an, on an extra club just so that I could play. Who does that? Parents do. So I got to play. And on this team, 
I got that chance to play maybe five minutes a game because I still wasn't very good. I still fell over all the time. But I got to play. And I also got something else. I got to learn a sense of determination, drive, grit, whatever you want to call it, that I know I wouldn't have otherwise. Because when you start behind everyone else, you got to catch up. And I didn't just want to be like everyone else. I wanted to be better. And I knew that took extra work, extra practice, extra whatever. And I put that in. So as I'm working my way up, from the D team to the C team to the B team to the A team and so on, so I did get better. My parents stumbled across an article that would change my life forever. US Paralympic team qualifies for Rio Paralympic Games. Soccer for people with disabilities? Why didn't I think of that? Turns out, Paralympic soccer, or para seven aside soccer, is for people who have suffered a stroke, have cerebral palsy, or have suffered another, another sort of traumatic brain injury. I qualified. Me. I qualified for the USA team. Soon enough, I was on a plane to California for my first ever training camp. But here's the catch. With the US men's team, there's no youth program. There's no youth team. There's only the men's team. So I'm 13 years old, barely hitting puberty, going up against grown men in their 20s and 30s who had lived two to three times the amount of life that I had. To say it was daunting is an understatement. But my whole life had been. So what's the difference? By the end of my first camp, my now head coach, Stuart Sharp, sat me down and said, Shay, you have the potential to make this team. He said this in his thick Scottish accent, which I am not even gonna try to replicate. You're welcome, coach. And that's all I needed to hear, was that you have the potential, but you have to earn it. So I went back, and that's what I did. I went back and worked at it every single day with the goal of making that USA team. And eventually I did, I got my chance. When I turned 15, I made my debut in Chile. Played, didn't play that much, but a game's a game. And since then, I've played in three international tournaments, including the Copa America, the Para Pan American Games, and yes, the Paralympic Soccer World Cup, where I was the youngest player at every single tournament. Still the young gun. <laughs> but I get asked a lot, Shay, what's your favorite part about playing for the US national team? And I could say scoring goals, because yes, I am a striker and I do love scoring goals. And I could say traveling the world, because yes, I do love traveling the world. It's absolutely beautiful. But there's only one answer. And that's the community and the brotherhood that I found. You see, for the first time in my life, I was able to meet, meet someone else with cerebral palsy. So many people go through their entire lives without meeting someone just like them. And here I was on a team with people just like me. It was unbelievable. It completely changed my outlook on my own disability and the world in general. But what about those who can't? What about those who don't have that opportunity to meet someone just like them? That's where the idea of CP Soccer came from. CP Soccer is the nonprofit organization I helped found with my dad and our fantastic friends, the Hallowell family, who we could do nothing without. The idea was, to give kids with cerebral palsy, stroke, or TBI that chance to play soccer that I had. Because like I said earlier, those kids get weeded out early, and they end up not being able to play a sport. It's not their fault. But we wouldn't let that happen. Not us. We provided that place where they can play. And we started in my home state, New Jersey, and since then we've grown exponentially with one location with a handful of kids to now 10 locations across the country with hundreds. It's incredible. It's amazing. And my role as coach is to teach them as a mentor, as a role model, whatever you want to call it. But I know it's cliche, but they teach me. They teach me every single day. 
I've learned new ways to tie my shoes. I've learned new ways to play video games, new ways to do basic things that I wouldn't have thought of this way. It's creative. It's amazing. I learned to adapt and I learned to thrive. All from them. I love the time I spend there. But most of all, the most impressive thing that every single one of these kids shares is a determination, grit, commitment, whatever you want to call it. And that was best demonstrated in 2020. Because when the world shut down, some of the hardest hit communities were people with disabilities. Because our quality of life depends on getting out and getting active. When you're stuck inside, you can't do those things. And it gets really difficult because there's no cure for cerebral palsy. You can only fight it off daily. So what did we do? Like the rest of the world, CP soccer went virtual. For the majority of the lockdown months of 2020, my dad and I would log on to our daily broadcast, that's what we called it, our little live broadcast, where he would hold the camera and he would commentate and I would stand in front of him and I would demonstrate. And every single day, we had kids from across the country and even the world join us just to play soccer. Because that's what they wanted to do. They came from their apartments, their backyards, their garages, wherever they were. It didn't matter. They came because they wanted to play. Because they were soccer players. They are soccer players. And they belong. They belong to the community. They belong somewhere where they can finally fit in, where everyone just gets it. They get why you're tired at the end of the day. They get why you're sore. They get all these things, and there's comfort in that. But that's not my favorite part. My favorite part, above all else, is that when these kids get asked that question, what sport do you play? They don't have to say, oh, well, I just do physical therapy, or oh, I don't play sports because I can't keep up. They now get the chance to say, I play soccer. What team? CP soccer. That's special. Thank you.